Welcome back to the Nash Potatoes Outdoor Show. Currently, I'm camping in the southwest portion of the state of Utah, and I found three amazing campsites I wanted to share with you today. I wanted to show you the journey up there because it's really quite beautiful. Some people call it dispersed camping. Some people call it primitive camping. Some people call it boondocking. Basically, it means you've got no utilities. It's not an organized campground. It's more or less an area where you can just park your camper. Typically offers beautiful views. So this portion of the trip is uh, 7.4 miles. Uh, this journey consists of three distinct sections. And I wanted to show them to you because some of these people are traveling with fairly big rigs. And the uncertainty of knowing what the conditions of the road are can be a bit stressful. So this is obviously just a paved section. I'm only going to show you three minutes of this. I uh, just wanted to show it to you because it's so beautiful. Going through this canyon, the windy road. Um, the second portion of the section is going to be a gravel road. Um, but it's going to be a smooth gravel road. And then the third section, um, it gets to be a little bit more bumpy. And I just wanted to show you exactly what that consists of. So, for now I'm going to let you enjoy the scenery, and once we make the turn onto the gravel road, I'll check back in with you. All right, now we're getting close to the left turn we need to make. You know you're about ready to make the left turn when you see this yellow sign on the right. But uh, it'll basically be the first Forest Service road on your left-hand side. And I'll go ahead and give you the GPS coordinates as well so you can just use Google Maps to find it. So this is the part of the gravel road that is super smooth. You'll see a sign up here on the left that says camping limit 16 days. That's pretty typical. They either allow you 14 days or 16 days and then you need to move your camper. So once again this is just beautiful scenery. Um, I pre pretty much traveled between 20 and 25 miles an hour down this road because it is just that smooth. But um, this goes on for just a little ways and then we'll get to the bumpy section and um, I'll give you some details once we get up to that portion.
Okay, right about here is when the road starts to get a little more bumpy. I think it's just maintained less often. It's very manageable. Um, here's a bump right here. Um, I did this with my Subaru Impreza and um, it was very manageable. I would obviously rather have a higher clearance than the Subaru Impreza, but uh, this portion here is quite steep. A Subaru Cross Trek would make this trek uh, really easily. The Subaru Impreza just doesn't have much ground clearance to it. So now we're kind of coming down into the camping area. You can see some people here on the left set up camp. You're pretty much allowed to set up camp just about wherever you want. They kind of want you to set up camp um, in an area that is that has been used before. So you don't really have to clear out much brush. All right, so there's a couple of campsites coming up here on the right hand side. So just to be clear, there's a bunch of campsites in this area. Um, the three I'm highlighting today are just my three favorites. So there's a camping area off to the right right here. And there's also, and now we're going to cross Shingle Creek right here. And then another camping area to the right. And then my campsite is to the left. So this is what I'm calling campsite number one. And this is my favorite for a couple of reasons. First of all, it's the easiest one to get to. Second of all, it's right along Shingle Creek, so I hear the river running all night long, which is just amazing. Um, so I guess there's one downfall to this site, and that is that the cell signal is just a little bit on the weak side. I only get about one or two bars, but that is the one downfall to this site. All right, then we're gonna jump back in the car and head up to campsite number two. This section of the road is a little bit steep and a little bit bumpy, but still very manageable in my Subaru Impreza. So I mapped this out uh, with Google Maps and where we're headed to is location A, which I'm calling campsite number two. And this entire trip right here to the next two campsites is just about uh, 2.4 miles which doesn't sound like far, but when you're only traveling about 10 miles an hour, it does take a little bit of time. So I'm gonna go ahead and let you enjoy the scenery and I'll check back in with you in just a minute.
Okay, we're coming up to a junction here, and Google Maps actually wants me to go straight and then hang a left further on down the road, but I found that road to be a bit too bumpy for me. What? So what I ended up doing is hanging a left right here, and then go down just a little ways, and then I'll hang a right to get to campsite number two. I felt like this route was a bit smoother. Um, once you get up here, you can check it out on foot, but if you were to stay straight and then hang a left, that road where you have to hang a left down there has got some fairly deep ruts, kind of kind of grooves in the road, and I just wasn't sure if my Subaru Impreza would bottom out or not. So then hang a right right here, and this area of the campground is just beautiful. So I'll let you enjoy the view and I'll check back in when we get to the campsite. Okay, so we're getting close to campsite number two. What this is, it's actually kind of like a triangular roundabout. And um, the campsite will be up here on the right-hand side. What I love about this campsite is um, the view is amazing. There's quite a bit of shade with a couple of picnic tables. There's a much better cell signal. And I guess if there's anything I don't like about it is that it's just a little bit harder to get to. So, right up in here is where the people typically park their campers. And there was somebody in there, so I didn't want to get too obtrusive with my camera. But I will show you what the view looks like. So that's the area right there on the left, and then they've got just this beautiful view. This is actually where I walk up in the morning and drink my coffee until they started camping there. It was kind of my little peaceful spot in the morning. All right, now let's get back on the road and head over to location B, which is what I'm calling campsite number three. This one is beautiful as well, and I will actually post the GPS coordinates for all three campsites in the description of this video and uh, it'll take us just a few minutes to get over there so I'll let you enjoy the view and uh, check back in in just a second.
All right, as we're making our way down this final stretch here, I did want to mention one thing. Um, not to scare you off or anything, but I did see a rattlesnake right in this area on the right-hand side of the road. First rattlesnake I've ever seen in my entire life, and it scared the bejesus out of me. Um, I only tell you that because if you've got kids or dogs, um, just be aware that there might be snakes in the area. So when I first checked in a few days ago, this campsite number three was full of people. It was like a whole family came in with four campers. So it is a fairly big area. I know they have at least two fire pits. Um, but what I love about this campsite here is um, 360 degree view. It's got a great cell signal. What I don't like about it is that there's not much shade and it is a medium difficulty to get to. So I actually got to know the lady that was staying here. She let me take some footage of this area. So this is uh, the view you'll have on one side of the campsite and then this is the view you'll have on the other side of the campsite. That dog's name is Bullet. He's my new buddy. But uh, that's all I've got for you today. Thanks for watching the Nash Potatoes Outdoor Show. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel. We will see you next time.